The question is often asked, why does a good God let people go to hell? And the question needs to be rephrased. Why do good people choose to reject the Lord? So as believers, we understand John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So we have an uh, entire population of people that have free will because we have a good God that gave us this free will to be able to choose him. So think of it like this. When you met your wife or your husband, you didn't want a robot. You didn't want to force someone into loving you because then it wouldn't be genuine. It wouldn't be authentic. It would lose all the appeal that it had because this person is just blindly following you, blindly loving you. No opinions of their own. Nothing would be interesting. Nothing would be genuine. God gave us the free will to choose to love him, to choose to follow him, to choose to surrender, to choose to do the hard things, to choose to not sin, to choose to love our brother as our neighbor. That is a gift from a good father that wants us to have a genuine relationship with him. It's kind of like you were born into this family. You didn't get to choose your parents. We didn't get to choose that God created us, but we do get to choose to love him and worship him and honor him. God loves all of us. And we see it all throughout creation. There's people out there that worship creation instead of worshiping the creator. But how can you look at the stars, look at the moon, look at the beautiful mountain landscapes and not know that there's a God? How can you see all the animals, the beautiful little baby animals and see those and not know that there's a good God that created these amazing creations, amazing animals, amazing people. Look at all the beautiful babies that you see out there. We didn't do that. God is so intricately involved in all of the creation process that he's got his hands in every part down to the smallest detail. There's no way that we can look at that and then say, there's no God. We evolved from monkeys or whatever foolishness that there is out there. The thing is, we as humans try to get a human ideology about a spiritual God, a supernatural father that did things in the supernatural that can never be done by a human. It can't be recreated. It can't be replicated. There's no way to explain it. And we have people out here trying to theorize something that can't be theorized. You can't formulate the way that God created things. You can't redo it because we're not God. Listen to this. Psalm 8. Verses three through four, this is David saying, when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? God gave us dominion over everything. Once he created the heavens and the earth and everything else, he created us and then he gave us dominion over the land. That's why we have authority on this earth. I mean, we control everything. From the way we create things with technology and what we do with the land, whether we farm there or we build houses there, we have industry over the cattle, over the chickens, over the pigs. You know, we, we raise these animals to eat them. Uh, we have farmland where we grow all our crops at. We have dominion on this earth. We choose what goes on on this earth because God gave us that ability. God gave us that responsibility. And so... We see what happens when man does this, though. We, now we have pollution. We have global warming. We have running out of fossil fuels and things that God created and put in this earth. We are draining the life source out of the planet. And so while that's a whole nother topic for another day and not what I'm talking about, what I'm saying is there's no way that you can see this planet. There's no way that you can see the life on this planet and think that God isn't involved, that God isn't there, that God doesn't love you. So when we ask the question, how does a good God let people go to hell? It's not that God's letting people go to hell. The Bible says in 2 Peter 3 verse 9, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. The Lord wants everyone to come to know him. That's why it's taken so long for Jesus to come back. And we choose to accept what Jesus did on the cross for us, and we choose to repent. Then we follow the Lord, right? And God's slow in coming back because time isn't the same for God as it is for us. God's giving us time to get our things, our affairs in order, if you will. 
And he's given us time to understand that we are in the last days and that we do need a savior and that we can't save ourselves. And if you look around the world today, you see everyone worshiping themselves, everyone worshiping the, their idols, what they choose to give value and worth to. And that's not what God called us to do. The thing is, guys, is God isn't rejecting certain people over others. He's not choosing, oh, this person's good, this person's bad, I'm going to accept this good person. No, it's an equal opportunity thing. God isn't a respecter of persons. God lets us choose him. God lets us follow him. And you're going to have people that choose to reject that. There's a lot of people that I've told or tried to tell about Jesus, and they flat out told me, I don't want anything to do with your Jesus. I don't want anything to do with your God. They could be good people, but they are now going to hell. And that's just the way it is. It's a matter of choice. It's a simple decision. You don't get to reject the Lord. You don't get to reject what Jesus did on the cross and still make it to heaven. And there's other religions out there that think that they have the way to heaven, but there's only one way to heaven. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. That doesn't mean that there's an alternative route to heaven. There's not another person out there that can forgive you of your sins. No other God forgives you of your sins. No other sacrifice besides Jesus is the sacrifice that matters. So if you have to sacrifice something or put something on an altar for your God, that's not the true religion. That's not going to get you to heaven. It's probably more demonic and witchcraft than anything. Be mindful of how you go about asking this question, because if you're worried about why a good God lets good people go to hell, then you're not realizing that the power to go to heaven is in Jesus and you have to accept that gift. It's a free gift. God gave us grace. God gave us mercy. And through that grace, we believe in faith that Jesus died for our sins and that he rose from the dead. And that's how we get to heaven. If you're trying to go about this another way, you're trying to outdo your bad with good, that's not going to get you into heaven. If you're talking about karma and all this stuff, that's not going to get you into heaven. God isn't going to reject those that choose him. He's there with his arms wide open, waiting on you to come home. Think about the prodigal son. The father was there waiting for his son to come over that hill and to come back home. And he ran to him, gave him a robe and a ring and some shoes and killed the fattened calf and threw a party for him coming back home. And that's what God will do for you. Even if you don't know God yet, every time that someone comes to salvation, the angels in heaven throw a party. And that's what you can have too. So don't reject the Lord. Don't get angry because you choose to reject the Lord and then realize that hell is the only outcome of that. There's so much more to being a Christian than going to heaven or going to hell. I really encourage you all to check your heart posture, analyze uh, whether you are happy in life the way that you're going, because I'm pretty sure that being far away from God like that doesn't fill the void. So come to the arms of the Father. Understand that God doesn't want any of us to perish and that we can have life everlasting if we accept what Jesus did on the cross and have him in our life as our Lord and Savior. That's going to do it for this one. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Until then, God bless.